Hi, David. Hello. It's a pleasure. Let's start with that $50 billion mm -hmm. loan uh, to Ukraine. This is using the interest from frozen Russian assets. Mm -hmm. There has been hesitation uh, to do that in the past because of fear of retaliation against Canadian assets and other assets abroad or other countries pulling their assets out of Western banks uh, out of concern. Are you worried about retaliation from this move? I think the, the, the message we're sending is very clear and the message G7 leaders are, are sending is very clear. Ukraine, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. <laughs> Russia needs to pay, period. Administration, and we will be ready when it comes to November. And for the rest, uh, we are now uh, working at a cabinet retreat here to make sure that we're concentrating, focusing on what Canadians need. And for the rest, the Prime Minister has my full support. Thank you, Mia. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron here, Canadian Looney. We're going to dumb it down. We've been watching a lot of committee investigations, a lot of Larry Brock, some highly intelligent, well-articulated questions being asked. We're gonna dumb it down. We're bringing back uh, Trudeau's girl, Melanie Jolie. She's the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Extramarital Affairs, haha, uh, Global Affairs too. Uh, what is she the minister of really? Like minister of knowing people's first names. She uses that trick all the time. I like that trick. It makes people feel comfortable and familiar, but Melanie Jolie, I don't know what to say. She has a likable characteristic about her, but characteristics, but she seems really simple. Just listen to her answers. Uh, we are just going to have some fun here. This is Trudeau's girl. How did she get that job in the first place? What is going on in Canada? Let's take a listen to Melanie Jolie dumbing it down. Hello, everybody. Bonjour tout le monde. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a great summer. Um, so uh, I'm here uh, as your foreign minister in the context of this cabinet retreat to talk about different issues that are important to Canadians, including, of course, um, what is happening in the world. We know that a lot of the geopolitical instability is causing a lot of anxiety with Canadians. And also, we know that affordability issues are linked to the fact that there are so many supply chains that have been disrupted because there are so many geopolitical tensions. And we saw it again today with what happened in Kyiv and across Ukraine. And of course, we condemn these attacks by Russia. And at the same time, uh, we saw it yesterday with the Hezbollah attack on Israel and Israel uh, standing to protect its own security. So my goal is to make sure ultimately that Canada is there to work on different solutions at being able also to find uh, solutions that are linked to bringing back more stability while, of course, at all times defending Canada's interests. Please go ahead, Ashley. It's been Hi, a Minister. long time. Good to see you. Um, Ashley Burke, CBC News. Uh, Minister of knowing people's first names, she uses that trick all the time. Minister, how concerned are you about the situation in the Middle East escalating to a, a full-out uh, war? And what is Canada doing about it? Yeah, so listen, I was just on the phone with the Jordanian foreign minister. I've had many conversations with different U.S. officials, of course, with Jake Sullivan again yesterday night on this issue. And I've been in contact with my Egyptian colleague. So, of course... We are working every day to support parties to get to a ceasefire. This is my number one priority, a ceasefire and the release of all hostages. And at the same time, we call on parties to make sure that there is no escalation because obviously we need to bring back peace to the Middle East. It's in Israel's long-term security interest to do so. And it is, of course, in the interest of all the peoples living in that region. And that's what we're doing. I'm doing many phone calls, many, uh, many meetings, uh, and I've been doing a lot of shuttle diplomacy, as you know. The military earlier this summer confirmed that they Sorry, were, I can't hear you well. Can you say? The military earlier this summer said that they were working on a contingency plan in case they need to evacuate thousands of Canadians that get stuck in Lebanon. Where is that at right now? Are, are, are you moving forward with evacuation plans at this point? So as we speak, of course, the travel advice for Lebanon is the same. So if you're in Canada, please don't go to Lebanon. If you're Canadian living in Lebanon, please come back. 
And so we saw it, tensions continue to rise, and we saw it even yesterday with, uh, with what happened between Israel and Hezbollah. So uh, we will continue to update uh, our travel advice as things continue to unfold. But at the same time, my uh, advice to Canadians have been the same for now many, many months. Um, and I would say also that, of course, uh, Canada works with many countries in the region. And of course, we always abide by our duty of care. At the same time, we need to make sure that Canadians don't put their lives at risk or the lives of their loved ones. Thank you. Mia Rabson from the Canadian Press. Hi, Mia. I'm the Minister of Knowing People's First Names. She uses that trick all the time. Just curious what, what conversations you have had or if you plan to have conversations with China about retaliation uh, related to the EV tariffs that were announced today. Did you talk to them ahead of time and are you concerned? Do you have any idea what China is planning to do as, in, in response? Okay, well, you know, you've heard me just beforehand. As Foreign Minister, my job is always to defend Canada's interests. And it is in Canada's interest to impose tariffs on Chinese EVs. And that's why we did it. Um, at the same time, I think it's important that we engage pragmatically with China. That's also why I went to China this summer, to make sure that we could address these issues. And I indeed raised the issue of the EV uh, tariffs consultation at the time and also of course uh, we've also this morning advised uh, China that we would be doing so. So uh, the fact that we are engaging with China diplomatically doesn't mean that we can't continue to defend our interests and that's exactly what we will continue to do and you'll see more of that in the coming weeks. I'm also wondering if you could comment on the d developments in the United States this summer, with particularly with the Dem Democratic Party uh, switching leaders, signs of momentum, growth. Do you think that the Liberal Party here has any lessons to take from them? Um, yeah, when it comes to the U.S., of course, I will also, I always have the same line, we'll, and it will always be that we will engage, notwithstanding who is elected in the White House. We've gone through an Obama administration, we've, done, we've worked with the Trump administration, and we uh, have worked with the Biden administration, and we will be ready when it comes to November. And for the rest, uh, we are now uh, working at a cabinet retreat here to make sure that we're concentrating, focusing on what Canadians need. And for the rest, the Prime Minister has my full support. Thank you, Mia. The Minister of Knowing People's First Names, she uses that trick all the time. Yes, Tonda. Hi, Tonda McCharles. Hi, good to see you. Um, I think good, only woman asking me questions. That's good. <laughs> Hi. Uh, to Mia's point, though, I think the question wasn't so much around, you know, can you work with any administration? We know your answer to that. I think the question we're trying to draw out from you is, what you uh, what you learned from watching the races south of the border, how the mm -hmm. dynamic has been so fluid, if you had any takeaways for your own party and your own future fortunes. And I know you're, you say you're busy working as foreign minister, of course you are, mm -hmm. but you're also a minister in Quebec and you would have concerns around the party's electability in all kinds of places. So, so talk to us about how you see the way forward in the next few months to ensure your own re-election, your party's mm -hmm. re-election. Well, listen, okay, I'll start with the U.S. When it comes to the U.S., we're following very, very closely. I've told you that. And, um, of course, we're following the dynamics on both sides. The race is very tight, and that's the only comment that I will make on what's happening in the U.S. And in the no, US. No, I know, I know, Tonda, you, okay. I know, but let me finish my answer. I've given you the time uh, to ask your question. And meanwhile, I'm engaging with the Republicans and I'm engaging with the Democrats, with the Biden administration, with the Kamala Harris team. So that's been what I've been doing behind closed doors. Uh, meanwhile here, of course, we're uh, connected to what people think. Of course, I've been connecting with people in my own writing. I've been door knocking also while being foreign minister in La Salle Verdun. And I'm confident that we can win uh, the by-election in La Salle Verdun. Meanwhile, are people preoccupied about affordability, housing? Of course they are. And we're not disconnected from that. So we need to work on it and we need to be able to provide the hope that is necessary in these times where a lot of people are feeling lots of anxiety. Is that, is that then, is that 
the only problem you see that lies ahead trying to prove to Canadians Canadians you can deliver results? Is that the only thing you think is the the change thing that's needed that people are Well, listen, for? I think when it comes to politics, it's all about trust and whether people trust the work you're doing as a government. And I think the challenges we're facing are real. And, uh, and we're not the only country facing these challenges, but we have to be better at it to make sure that we're delivering results, period. And so the proof is in the pudding. That's what we'll be working on. Can I? Uh, yeah, just I'll one just, last I'll, one. I'll ask. Yeah. I just wanted to ask quickly on. on um, <laughs> it's okay. I have. It's been a long time. <laughs> Go ahead. On China. Yeah. We announced uh, Canada announced tariffs this morning, and and also announced the consultation of potentially more tariffs coming down mm -hmm. the road, and yet we also heard from the prime minister that this is an important trading relationship. But we still want to have normal yeah. trade with China. Mm -hmm. You talk with Chinese diplomats mm -hmm. regularly. Mm -hmm. How confident are you you can strike this balance of, of bringing in tariffs, bringing in more tariffs potentially, but keep uh, the trading relationship otherwise normal? I mean, how do you, how confident are you that we, you can keep this trading relationship from, without escalating from tariffs, retaliation, tariffs, retaliation? How do you strike that balance? We've taken a very strategic decision, which is to protect the EV supply chain in Canada and, of course, in North America. And that's why it was so important for us to impose tariffs like we did. I think that when it comes to China, indeed, we have a very important trade relationship, $100 billion per year. And therefore, we need to engage diplomatically with China to ultimately bring predictability to the relationship. And that's the only thing that I can tell you today, because ultimately, right now, this decision was taken based on what we thought was in the interest of Canadians. Thank you. Good. Yep. Yeah, Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, is that enough of Melanie Jolie? Like, and she does use that first name trick all the time. My name is Aaron. This is Canadian Looney. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. We do enjoy the comments, so please leave a comment. We were like we we read every single comment and acknowledge it so thank you all for watching and again like share subscribe get notified and leave comment please i love the comments we'll check in next video this melanie jolie these liberals this foolish cabinet man oh man what a crisis we're in in canada till the next video catch you next time thank you for watching this one